it's Liz Yule from Old Stables Crafts. Thank you for joining me again today. You've sort of caught me in the middle of something, but that's always good. Um, the card that I'm going to share with you today is this one, and it is inspired by a pin I found on Pinterest. I don't know, can you see? Maybe you can see it. Anyway, it's from Stamper's Workshop, uh, who is a stamping up demonstrator in Australia. And it's using the soon-to-go uh, Butterfly Gala Designer Series paper that is one of the items that you can get for free in Celebration. And I thought I would show you my version of it. Now, the original had a larger piece and it was offset and had a smaller border. So this is my version of it. Uh, but it uses the rectangle stitched framelits and I'm using the two largest of the what I call the skinny framelits so uh, the smaller of the two for the designer series paper and the larger of the two for the basic black so that's how I got my layers so no cutting involved obviously you can cut uh, my designer series paper is a standard for me, first layer card mat, so five and five eighths by three and seven eighths. Do remember if you're in the USA or Canada, your card stock is shorter and fatter than ours. But basically what I'm looking at is about an eighth of an inch all the way round as a gap. So my layer is an eighth of an inch smaller all the way round or a quarter of an inch Cut, so cut a quarter, quarter of an inch smaller and then layered up. So that's how I got to that. But do remember, your card is short and fat. Ours is long and thin. So I've selected my piece of the designer series paper. It's the black and white pattern designer series paper. And then I found another piece that is the same pattern. And I've just die cut and that will layer kind of there. But obviously I'm going to have the black layer in between. So it does mean that you can actually have a bit more um, margin of error. I've chosen a selection of stamping blends. And my background is the light crumb cake, just as a neutral background. Um, and then I'll talk you through the colours as I use them. So this is Dark Poppy Parade. And I want a real pop of colour kind of in the middle of my card or sort of top middle of my card so I'm going to colour the whole of my butterfly at the top with the dark poppy parade I could of course use the brush tip end um, that it's easier to get the outline crisp if you use the bullet uh, which is why I'm using the bullet so I might switch over now I like to see the piece that I'm colouring from just to make sure that I haven't got um, an area that I think is one thing that is actually something else because you're working on such a small piece um, and I will I will just for speed having done the outline come in with the brush tip end now obviously you can get much more detailed with this and um, you can do a pattern if you want but I think the the uh, impact is better if you have blocks of colour and then I've got light Bermuda Bay because the dark I felt was too dark um, so I've got light Bermuda Bay and I'm doing the ah uh, the butterfly in that and as I say you can get into the whole colouring it as if it's a red admiral or a painted lady or any other butterfly that you happen to like but I'm going for impact and a bit of speed for the sake of you guys not watching me colour for too long um, so that's kind of why I've gone for those colours right now those are the uh, those colours are only going to be used on the butterflies because otherwise it kind of gets a bit too messy so the flowers I've got uh, light daffodil delight dark petal pink dark flirty flamingo and f flirty flamingo and granny apple green although looking at this particular bit of pattern I don't know that I'm going to need that because I can't see anything that I would think of as a leaf so I'm going to do the little flowers in the daffodil delight 
and I'm not kind of worrying too much about whether I'm exact in my colouring. This is a sketchy drawing, so I'm kind of going for a sketchy finish. Um, so yes, don't get too concerned about accuracy. Obviously you will have a bit more time than me, so that means you can spend a bit more time getting them exactly how you like. Oh, I've just spotted a leaf. I think we've got one leaf, that one there, or possibly that there as well. Uh, I'm going to pretend that that is part of the same sort of flower. Then I'm going to come in with my flirty flamingo. These are not naturalistic. I've not got naturalistic butterflies, so I'm not going for naturalistic flowers either. And then I'm going to come in with the flirty flamingo again down here. And uh, this looks like it's probably the same sort of flower. And what's that? That is one of those. So again, I think this is probably the same sort of flower. It's going to be now anyway, and then that just leaves us with this. And again, I'm going to go with the same sort of flower. So that one I am going to colour in with the bullet tip. Everything else I shall come in with a large end. Now, I had a class recently where we used these and there was some confusion about whether or not for fine work you wanted to use the brush tip end or the bullet end because they saw the point and assumed that this was for fine work, which it can be, but this is actually the softer end. Um, so I use it for larger areas and I use the bullet tip for the more precise colouring. So that I think is the only green we're going to need. Uh, oh, we could possibly say that these are leaves because we have no idea what they are. So let's bring some green down there and uh, possibly up here too, just so that we've got some green. I think it's very vague as to what they are, so we'll not bother worrying too much. And we'll have some petal pink up here. Do all of that in petal pink. And then just come in with our Daffodil Delight again and just colour that in in Daffodil Delight. So that's all of that. Then just some snell and the back obviously looks really quite messy. Whoops. Um, not sure that the alcohol and snail like each other particularly, but it will be fine. Right, so this then just pops into the middle of our rectangle, or ish, and just make sure you've got all the bits off the edge of your die cutting. And then again, snail on the back, two strips should be enough. You could use liquid adhesive, but I'm not convinced with uh, the paper and the background that that would be totally clever and then just as near as you can get it yeah no that is about right possibly a wee bit further across just kind of line it up as much as you can and because you've got this wide border it's actually much easier to line up than if you had a narrow border and then another basic black card base. So this is just a half sheet of your card stock, whatever that might be. Um, and then this is a quarter of an inch smaller all the way um, on each of the two sides. So this is roughly in inches four and an eighth by ooh, not quite six, so five and seven eighths. And then this is five and five eighths by three and seven eighths. So it's a quarter of an inch smaller um, on the two sides. So if you're doing four and a half by, sorry, eight and a half by 11, um, you would just need to adjust your measurements. You'll end up with 
five and a half by four and a quarter as your base. So you would have four by five and a quarter as your designer series paper, roughly. Um, but do just bear in mind that I work in international A4. Now you will need a liner because writing in black, you could, or writing on black is not great. You could, of course, write on black using your chalk marker. That would work, um, but otherwise you would need a liner. But as we're now at ten and a half minutes, um, I shall leave it at that. But do remember, this is a free level one item with a celebration qualifying order. And you've only got until the end of Sunday. Uh, online orders, I highly recommend that you get your online orders in before nine o'clock, because otherwise things are going to start bashing up uh, and the ordering does finish. I think at 10.30, but remember, please remember, we change our clocks Saturday into Sunday, so the times will be different. Uh, what I do not know is whether we are working to GMT or British Summertime on that, those times, so please assume that it's on GMT, um, because then that way we should be okay. Well, work on whichever is the worst, so 7 o'clock in the morning becomes they spring forward, becomes eight o'clock in the morning. Clocks go forward. Yes. Yes. Clocks go forward. So seven o'clock becomes eight o'clock. So assume that it's the GMT time and you'll be fine. That was a waffle. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much indeed for the inspiration from Stamper's Workshop over in Australia. I will have a link on my blog about this so uh, to that um, website I may not be able to find the exact post but I will do my best and uh, obviously if you want to order if your order is under 150 pounds please use the host code which is in the description bar below there is a link to my online store also below the blog post is linked below and all the information about what I have used will be there too as well as some close-up photographs and all that good stuff. Thank you very much indeed for watching, and I look forward to seeing you very soon.